A register is how a CPU, or circuitry in general, does memory. It's usually implemented with latches and flip-flops, and the difference is a flip-flop is usually going to have an edge-triggered clock, and a latch is not. So a latch is going to be a little more combinational, where it's going to update as its inputs change, and a flip-flop is going to kind of be aware of its inputs but not do anything until you tell it now, now, now. So it's better in more complex circuitry. The CD4099BE is three chips in one. Its actual role is an 8-bit addressable latch register, so it has no clock signal. I have the DIP version, which has the following pins. And I mentioned it has multiple uses, so it can be used as a register. It can also be used as a decoder and a DMUX. The circuitry doesn't change. It's not literally three chips in one. It's just how you hook it up. You can use it for other things. So VCC and ground are obvious. The data pin is how you get data into the device. It's basically just the input. You input one bit at a time. It's called addressable because you pick a single bit out of the eight. It's an eight bit register. So you are doing something with one bit at a time. You have address pins, so AO through A2. So you got A2, A1, AO is a three bit number that gives you which of the eight outputs you're working with. And the data is gonna be connected, the data line is gonna be connected to that pin, to that bit in the register. The actual modes are reset and write disable. These basically gives you your four modes of operation, how the thing behaves. And then your output is Q7 through Q0 is just your eight bit output. You can view them as separate lines or you can view them as an eight bit number, two four-bit numbers, whatever you want, because it's addressable. Like a shift register, if you want to change what's in a shift register, a serial shift register, you have to shift in eight bits, and all the bits are changing the whole time because they're walking down the thing. But you can change one bit at a time here, which is nice because you can not disturb the other seven bits. So if whatever's on the other side doesn't want spurious signals, it doesn't want to be switching all the time, then you can change one bit at a time and it'll be nice. You can use a shift register if it doesn't care. Like if you if you shift into a shift register and then tell the next thing, okay, now read it, then it doesn't matter. But this is nice if you don't want to be changing bits you're not trying to change in the process of changing some other bit. When reset is zero, and write disable is one. So we are not resetting and we are disabling writing. So data is disconnected right here. It's hold. We're not writing, we're not resetting, we're not doing anything. It has its eight bits, it's putting out whatever they are, and that's it. So this is the this is the safe mode. If write disable is one and reset is one, it's reset. So we are resetting, but we're still disable writing. So the data pin is not doing anything, but we reset, everything goes to zero. So you would do this on boot up. You could have, you know, on boot up, you have a capacitor that charges or whatever to trigger a transistor that sends reset signals to everything on the board. And then after the reset has happened, you turn it off and reset goes low. So it's, it's the chip reboot. It just sets everything to zero. To actually change the data, you use this mode, right? We're not resetting, but we're also not disabling writing. So we're writing. You set your address pins. That says which bit you're going to write to. Data is the value you're going to write. So put high on data, set address to five, you'll write a high to Q5. Now, in this mode, it's called a transparent latch, because again, there's no clock signal. So if reset stays low, write disable stays low, so write enabled, and you don't change the address pins, you just have the address pins set, everything set, and you change data, high, low, high, low, whatever, then Q5, if that's what you're on, is gonna keep changing as well. It's gonna change in real time minus propagation delay. That's what a transparent latch is. It means the input changes, the output changes immediately, and it follows those changes. So this is great if the thing that comes next is also combinational, like an adder, like if this is the input to an adder chip, then as you change the bits, the adder chip is going to already be doing its work and it's going to be done sooner than if everything had to wait for a clock signal. But it's also dangerous. If you leave write enabled and you change the address pins, first of all, you're not going to change them at the exact time and you're going to get, you know, you're, you're going to accidentally address a pin you don't mean to address. So you're going to 
you know, crash through a whole bunch of bits and change them on your way to the one you are trying to set. So if you're trying to set multiple bits, you always want to set it to hold, write disable. So you write disable, set the address pins, write enable, set the data, and then you write disable again, and that locks it in. So you always want to have write disabled when you're changing the address pins, if you're using it as a register. And that's it. That's the whole register mode. The final one here is what's interesting. This is the one that lets you use this as a decoder or a demux, because you are writing, which means data is changing the pin that is currently being addressed, but you're also resetting at the same time. You're locking reset on and write on at the same time. So that's interesting. What happens when we do that? A demuxer takes an input and provides an output to whichever one is selected. You've got address pins. So you've got address pins. You've got your input, your data, and your output queue. So address pins could be a number from 0 to 7, and there will be 8 lines. So the address pin says which line. Reset is high, which means every single bit is trying to reset to 0. So every one of these outputs is going to be 0, but writing is enabled. So for the specific pin that's being addressed, it'll act as a transparent latch for that pin. Data overrides reset. So every single pin, every single bit that's not being addressed is constantly being reset to zero, but the data pin, whether it's one or zero, is being written out to whichever one is being addressed. So that's how it works as a demux. You've got your ones and zeros serial signal, and you can, you know, send a bit here and 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 rotate to go serial to parallel or whatever. So data will be reflected on the address pin. So there's your demux. It's not the same as an analog switch, which I'll get to into the future. It's not high impedance for the unselected bit. It's a low signal. So you're always getting an actual signal, no floating outputs. So if you're hooking this up to combinational logic, that's good. But just keep in mind that that is a different behavior from an analog switch. And then you've got decode. So once again, you've got your data pin and then your outputs and your address pins. So a decoder is something, a binary decoder, is something that takes a binary number. So three bits would be zero to seven, so eight possibilities. And then it outputs a high or a low, if it's active low, but in this case a high, to the one that's being selected. So a demux is meant to take a serial signal and split it into parallel. A decoder is meant to send an enable signal. Let's say you have six devices on a bus and you want to turn on one of those devices at a time. So you use fewer pins from your microcontroller to send a binary number to the decoder. The decoder has a whole bunch of pins because it's cheap to have a decoder with pins, and that is going to send an enable signal to one of these devices, whichever one is the index. So it's actually exactly the same as the demux, except data is high, always, or a one if you prefer. Instead of having data be an actual signal that can be high or low, data is just tied to high, so that when you demux, you're always demuxing a one, and it behaves as a decoder. So the address pins are not a selector for where the data are going, like in demux mode. The address pins are the binary number you are decoding, and data just becomes an enable. Speaking of that, you could set data to zero, and all the outputs would be zero, and in other words, you would disable everything. So you could think of data as your enable line for whatever these are connected to. So your binary number is decoded into an enable signal for other devices, but then you can just turn it off by changing data to low. It's the same thing. It's a transparent latch. So data is always going from input to output live based on address whenever write is enabled. But by resetting all the other pins, you go from register to demux or decoder. So that's pretty neat. So let me know if you have any more questions. I hope I've been thorough. For now, I'll be seeing you.